Do you like it? Thank you all. Thank you. Let's all welcome back Swami Nikhilanandji. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have in Austin a lot more than he used to be here. Thank you, Swamiji. For those, of who, uh, for those of you who do not know Swamiji, I would just like to give a brief introduction. Swami Nikhilanandji is a Canadian-born Hindu spiritual leader based in Austin, Texas. He is a sannyasi disciple and pracharak of Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj. Attracted to the teachings of Hinduism from a very young age, Swamiji eventually let his deep spiritual longing lead him to India, where he was most fortunate to come under the guidance of Sri Kripaluji Maharaj, the fifth original Jagat Guru of this age. Thereafter, he extensively studied Hindi. For those of you who talk to him Hindi know that. He, he does better Hindi than a lot of us. He studied Hindi, the philosophy of prime Sanskrit scriptures, Vedas, Darshan Shastras, Gita, Bhagavatam, and practiced meditation in the tradition of Raganuga Bhakti. Now with the blessings of his Guruji, he offers satsang programs throughout America, engaging audiences with very clear explanations of Hindu philosophy, coupled with inspired chanting of Sanskrit mantras and shlokas and charming Nam Sankirtan. His informative and compelling speeches provide practical insights into how to adopt the teachings of Sanatan Dharma into our daily lives. They inspire us to awaken our inner spiritual potential. If you would like to stay in touch with Swamiji, you can like Swami Nikhilanandji's Facebook page or follow him on Twitter. I would now welcome Naresh Bhaiya to welcome Swamiji with a garland. Thank you, Naresh Bhaiya. A few housekeeping rules. If you have small children uh, who may make noise, we have an outside area left to the lobby where the speech is available. It's streaming live there. So you can uh, request your children to be there if, if they could make noise. Please do switch off your cell phones and listen very attentively to the speech here today. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Badham Muktidam Muktam Brahma Krida Brigi Kritam Yasyai Kani Shwasita Kal Matha Valambia 
जीवंतिलोम विलजा जगदंड नाथा विष्णु महान सईहयस्य कलाविशेषो गोविंदमादि पुरुषम् तमहम् भजामि यो ब्रह्मानं विदधाति पूर्वम् यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिनोति तस्मै तग्मं देवमात्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम् मुमुक्षुर्वै शरणमहम् प्रपद्ये <clears throat> the divine souls please join me in a couple minutes of nam sankirtan and after that we'll continue yesterday's topic by taking up the question how do we master our mind <laughs> Thank you. 
सरकार की दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ अ टू पार्ट सीरीज दैट वॉज बिगन यस्टर डे वन आई टुक अप द टॉपिक ऑफ हाउ टू एलिमिनेट स्ट्रेस सो आई एक्सप्लेन दैट वी हैव टू गेट टू द रूट कॉज ऑफ स्ट्रेस एंड द रूट कॉज इज बोथ इंटलेक्चुअल एंड एक्सपीरियंशियल intellectually the root cause of all of our stress is that we don't know who we are we have forgotten that we are the divine soul we associate ourselves we identify ourselves as the physical body or perhaps the mind but i explained that neither is true our true self is beyond the body and beyond the mind the atma the divine soul which is a part of god we are all ansh of bhagwan shri krishna he is our anshi so we belong to him that is who we are and that is where we belong that is our home to be with krishna so part of the reason that we have stress is that we don't correctly identify ourselves we identify ourselves as the body or the mind and we relate to the world or we try to relate ourselves to the world and that leads to a lot of stress and disappointment and frustration we can go on and on listing all the negative emotions we, but just call it stress so part of the reason is that we have this misunderstanding about who we are and this misunderstanding can be cured through correct understanding get the correct knowledge and do manan of that knowledge keep reviewing i am a divine soul i belong to krishna i can never be harmed or destroyed it's impossible my soul is always going to remain in its natural divine state so we have to do manan we have to review these facts in our mind this is the intellectual side of the problem the experiential side of the problem is that we don't experience true happiness in our daily lives when we feel bereft of happiness it creates a tension in our in our mind that tension that i don't have what i want where can i find it how can i truly be happy so i explained yesterday that our anshi the one to whom we belong he is perfect happiness shri krishna is true happiness so only by knowing him can we know and experience true happiness then i told you that there has to be a path that leads us to this experience if we could actually experience true happiness there would be no question of any stress that would eliminate stress forever because if you're happy it's understood that you're not feeling stressed out but that happiness should last forever and be completely satisfying for that to happen we need to find unlimited eternal everlasting happiness and that happiness only exists in god or we could even say it would be more correct to say that shri krishna himself is happiness personified he is anand personified so we need a path to attain that divine happiness 
we need a path to attain God and by attaining God we'll get perfect happiness and we'll eliminate stress forever. The path is none other than devotion. Bhakti revainam nayati, bhakti revainam darshayati, bhakti revainam pashyati, bhakti vashah purusho, bhakti reva bhuyasi. Ved tells us, if you want to attain God, you must do bhakti, you must do devotion. Bhakti atmananyaya shakya ahame vam vidhor juna. Gyatum drashtuncha tatvena praveshtuncha parantap Gita. Shri Krishna says there's no other way other than bhakti. I'm only attainable through bhakti. Whether you want to know me, experience me, merge into me, the only means is through devotion, the path of bhakti. Bhaktya hamekaya grahya shraddhayatma priya satam bhakti punati manishtha shvapaka napi sambhavat bhagavatam. Again, Shri Krishna is telling his devotee Uddhav Paramahans. I am only grahya, I am only reachable or attainable through bhakti. There is no other way. Bari mathe baru hoi grita sikata te baru tela binu hari bhajana na bhavatariya yaha siddhanta ya pela that even if someone could achieve impossible things like squeezing a rock and getting oil out of it or churning water and getting butter out of it even then it would still be impossible for them to cross this ocean of cosmic existence without Hari Bhajan, without doing Bhakti to Shri Krishna. So Bhakti is the path to God. But remember, our problem our, and our solution have to do with our mind, right? We want to know how to eliminate stress. Stress is experienced in the mind. The solution is experience happiness, divine happiness in the mind. Therefore, bhakti must also be done with the mind. There are two main categories of devotion. External practices of devotion and internal. Bahiranga bhakti, antaranga bhakti. Bahiranga bhakti is done with the body or the senses. Like chanting kirtan you do with your vani. That's external devotion. Reading, doing some pat, that is done with your eyes. That's also external devotion. Coming to the mandir and doing pranam, you do with your head and your feet. That's external devotion. Doing puja, you do it with your hands. It's external devotion. External devotion doesn't solve the problem of how to eliminate stress or experience happiness in the mind. So we need to know about internal devotion. Internal devotion means joining your mind with God. In external devotion, we're using our body and senses to do some devotion to God, but doing things with our body doesn't purify our mind or join it with God. So we need to understand more about internal devotion. Internal devotion is the means of joining the mind with God. However much our mind is joined with God, that much of God's grace is automatically received and 
in the same amount we start to experience true happiness. So whether our hands are engaged in devotion, or our head is engaged in devotion, or our feet are engaged in devotion, none of that matters if our mind is not engaged in devotion. So we have to understand how to join the mind with God. The process of doing that is called Rup Dhyan. It's a form of meditation. The mind is a very fickle thing. It's a very subtle thing. How will you join your mind with God? God is everywhere. So you don't have to go somewhere to join your mind with God. But the mind is not a solid thing that you can just say, Okay, here's God. Here's my mind. Let me put the two together. It's more difficult than that. Now God is here. God is even in our mind. But if we don't remember God, there's no actual connection. So the joining part is accomplished simply by remembering God. In Sanskrit, we call it smaran or chintan, thinking of God, remembering God. But if we just leave it general like that, it's not going to help us accomplish our goal. How do I think of God? How do I remember God? We need a, a well-defined process. So this well-defined process is a type of meditation that we call Rup Dhyan. This is the term used by Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj. This is not a new process. It's described at many places in our scriptures. But Jagat Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj gave prime emphasis to this, saying that all forms of devotion can be enhanced by adopting this process of Rup Dhyan. So how do we think of God using this process of Rup Dhyan? We need a form. If I say to you, think of your mother, <clears throat> or think of your father, don't you automatically think of what they look like? Doesn't an image come in your mind? Of course. Most people are primarily visual people. So when we say, I want to think of my mother, you see her face, you see what she looks like in your mind. This is a natural way that our mind works. So if we are going to think of God, we have to make it natural and use the same process. So if we say, think of God, that would be hard if you don't think of an actual specific form of God. Like if I say, think of fruit, don't you, think, don't you have to think of a specific fruit? You can't just think of fruit in general, right? You'll think something will come in your mind, grapes, mango. Some specific fruit has to come in your mind. Otherwise, what are you thinking of? Just F-R-U-I-T or just visualizing the word fruit? The word fruit has no power. You have to actually think of fruit. So you think of a specific fruit. Similarly, just saying remember God or think of God, that's not going to be effective. We have to be more specific. Think of a specific form of God. So we should say instead of remember God, we should say think of Krishna. And you could do this with any specific form of God. Today we're going to focus on Krishna, Radha Krishna. Think of Krishna, now your mind, now it becomes natural for your mind. Oh yeah, I know what Krishna looks like. I've seen so many murtis, I've seen so many paintings, I've seen even plays and uh, movies where people were playing the part of Krishna, so I know what Krishna looks like. If you tell me to think of Krishna, an image comes in my mind. Now what's the difference between thinking of an actor who played the part of Krishna and thinking of actual Krishna? Because it doesn't make sense that thinking of an actor, how, how can that count as devotion, right? Or thinking of a piece of stone that's carved to look like Krishna. 
Why would that count as devotion? Or thinking of a painting that a material person drew. That, that, thinking of Krishna in that way, why would that have devotional value? Those things don't have devotional value on their own. What gives them devotional value is you realize Krishna is in that. So when you, for example, look at the murti of Krishna over here, just seeing it as a beautifully carved and painted piece of stone, a beautifully decorated murti, that doesn't count as devotion. Krishna is omnipresent, so he's in. Real Krishna is in the murti also, in his personal form. So if you look in with those eyes, faithful eyes, then you're having darshan and you're actually joining your mind with Krishna. It's the same thing in your mind. If you're just imagining a form, oh yeah, this is, these are the paintings I've seen or this, I saw this actor dressed like Krishna and you think like that, that's not enough. You have to realize this image I'm creating in my mind, this is Krishna. Because Krishna is in my mind also, so he's also inhabiting this form that I have imagined. Therefore, it is not just imagination. The imagination is the means of joining your mind with God, but you have to infuse faith into it. This form of Krishna that I've created in my mind, this is real Krishna. So I want you all to try this for a moment. Everybody close your eyes and form an image of Krishna according to your liking. There's no right or wrong here because the, the thing that makes it right is your faith. You have to believe this is Krishna and then it is and he graces you. This is, this is where the connection comes from when you really feel and believe this is Krishna. So see him in any way that pleases you taller, shorter, younger, older, <laughs> decorated and dressed the way you want. And if you're more, if you find it more natural to focus on a specific part of Krishna, you can do that. You don't have to even try to see the whole of his body. You can just focus on one part. You could see his divine lotus feet. You could just see his eyes or his smile or his face or his peacock feather. It's all a part of his divine personality. So when you do this, you create a real connection with Krishna. This is the process of joining our mind with God. So you see, we made it very specific. Take just one few more moments. See Krishna in your own way and feel his presence. Make it live Krishna, like his hairs moving in the breeze. He smiles, he blinks. It's real live Krishna here in front of you. can start to open your eyes. This was a very brief experience of Rup Dhyan. This is the only process we need for attaching our mind to God. That connection you just made, that's just the beginning. That's the start. You might have even felt something this time. 
you might have made such a connection that you actually felt, oh yes, Krishna is here. You felt a little happiness or excitement in thinking that. That's the beginning. That's that real happiness I was referring to. That's the, the secret elixir that we need. That's the thing that's going to fill this void we feel inside. It's Krishna's grace. It's His bliss. And He is able to give it to us to the extent we join our mind with Him. So let me circle back around to the first question we started with. How to eliminate stress? This sip we just took of divine happiness, we can really call it devotional happiness at this point because we haven't experienced the ultimate divine happiness yet. This little sip of that bhaktiras that we just took, that, that's the thing that we have to get more of. The more we get that, the more that fills up our heart, the more all the stress and tension of our mind just dissolves away in a permanent way. Not like a temporary relief, like taking a, an aspirin when you have a headache because of your brain tumor. And we're actually curing the brain tumor, not just dealing with the symptoms. We're giving our mind the actual happiness that it wants, divine happiness. And in that way, all the symptoms of stress gradually start to reduce. Another thing that happens is that our mind purifies. The more we experience God's grace, the more we receive God's grace, the more our mind purifies. Yatha yathatma parimrijyate sau mat punyagatha shravana bhidhanai tatha tatha pasyati vastu sukshmam chakshuryathaivan jana samprayuktam in the Bhagavatam, Shri Krishna is telling about bhakti and he says, the more you join your mind with him, the more the mind purifies. And as your mind purifies, your experience of Krishna's closeness becomes more and more intense, more and more real, until eventually you meet him face to face. This is the ultimate goal. And when you meet God face to face, Bhidyate hridayagranthish chidyante sarvasanshraya chiyante chasya karmani tasmindrishte paravare mundaka upanishad. All your problems are gone. Jushtam yada pashyatyanyamisha masya mahiman miti vita shokaha. Mundaka Upanishad. When you completely join with God, when you reach that ultimate state of surrender where your mind becomes one with God, then iti vita shokaha, all your shok, all your tension, stress, suffering, problems, it's all finished forever. So if you want to eliminate stress, there is a way, there, but you have to take that medicine. The medicine is practicing rup dhyan because through that method you join your mind with God and you start receiving His grace. And eventually through this process your mind becomes in total union with God. Then you're free from stress forever. But it's a gradual process. The stress goes on reducing the more you practice devotion in this way. What about the question of mastering the mind? Well, this also comes with practice. When someone thinks, I want to master my mind, normally there are two things they wonder about. How to control the unwanted emotions like anger, and how to control the mind when I sit to meditate. So the problem of anger, it's the same 
as dealing with stress. You don't just want to deal with the symptoms. You want to deal with the root cause. What is the root cause of anger? That we're not happy. So get perfect happiness from God, you won't have to worry about anger. Gradually as your mind purifies by practicing Rup Dhyan more and more, anger is going to automatically reduce. You don't have to think how to control my anger. Just do Rup Dhyan, practice this sadhana every day, and you'll see anger is going to start reducing on its own. What about controlling the mind when you're trying to meditate? I close my eyes, I try to picture Krishna, and my mind goes here and there. What to do about that? How to gain mastery over the mind? Well, one big thing we can do to help us with the meditation is to add kirtan into it. Although I told you kirtan is an external form of meditation, so the kirtan on its own won't solve our problems. But if you're trying to do rupdhyan, which is the internal meditation, You'll find that if you do it in silence, just doing Rup Dhyan, you'll only be able to do it for a few minutes before you get bored or distracted. But if you add Kirtan to it, now you have a way of enhancing your meditation. The Kirtan, the chanting of God's name, is the best external devotion to support your meditation. All forms of external devotion are good. They can all help you focus your mind on God. As long as you keep in mind that the main goal is to remember God. However, the best of all of these is Kirtan. So you can use Kirtan to help keep your mind focused. And know that it's natural for the mind to wander. The mind wanders because it's accustomed to seeking happiness in worldly things and it's developed big attachments in the world. So wherever you're attached, that's where your mind is going to go to. It's natural. We shouldn't expect anything else. What ends up happening is the more you practice this Rup Dhyan, your mind gets more and more attached to Krishna. He starts becoming a part of you. Just like the ones you love, they live in your heart. The more Krishna starts living in your heart, the more your mind is going to come under control. Right now, all the desires and attachments you have related to the world, those are pulling your mind here and there when you try to meditate. The more you do Rup Dhyan, so it's just a matter of practice, the more Krishna enters your mind, in other words, the more you get attached to him, that means the worldly attachments start reducing. So naturally the mind is going to come under control. The more you reduce those worldly attachments, the more your mind comes under control. More worldly attachments, less control over the mind. Reduce them, more control over the mind. How to reduce them? You can't reduce them by saying, I want to remove my attachments. It doesn't work. You reduce them by doing Rup Dhyan. That's it. Join your mind with Krishna. He's going to become a bigger attachment and these ones are going to reduce automatically. So this is the gist of how to master the mind. There's no shortcut or trick or quick technique. Chanchalam himana Krishna pramathi balavadridham Tasyaham nigraham manye vayo riva sudushkaram. Gita. Arjuna is complaining to Krishna. You tell me to remember you, but I can't control my mind. It would be easier to control the wind. Krishna says, Asanshayam mahabaho mano dur nigraham chalam. Abhyasena tu kaunte bairagena chagrihyate. Yes, Arjun, I accept your statement that the mind is difficult to control. However, with abhyas, with practice, you can bring the mind under control. 
So I've explained the process for you here today. How to do Roop Dhyan, it's so simple. You sit, form the image of Krishna, infuse that with your faith that this is real Krishna, and you're going to start receiving His grace. Practice it for five minutes, you'll get five minutes of benefit, meaning five minutes of grace and happiness, five minutes of purification of your mind, so you'll make five minutes of progress. You want to do it for longer, you might need to add some kirtan so that you don't get bored. <clears throat> do it for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour. However much practice you do, that much benefit you'll get. And that much mastery you will begin to gain over your mind. And that much stress will naturally be eliminated. So this simple practice of Rup Dhyan that I taught you today in two minutes. It's the most powerful medicine you can take every day to reduce stress and gain mastery over your mind. But just like any medicine, if you don't take it regularly, it's not going to have much effect. So you have to practice Rup Dhyan every day. Start with some small amount of time and gradually increase and you'll see the benefits in your own life. Don't worry about how to sit or what time of day or where to sit. Just be comfortable. Do it in a place you won't be disturbed and do it according to what's convenient for your schedule. For this internal devotion, this Rup Dhyan, there is no restriction of time and place. You just do it regularly according to your own convenience and comfort and you'll get the results for yourself. So we have a few minutes remaining before we'll practice a little more Rup Dhyan and do Kirtan. So I can take two or three questions if anybody has uh, anything they want clarified or anything they want to ask about related to today's topic. Now is a chance for some question and answer. Anybody have anything you want to ask about Rup Dhyan, meditation, or perhaps the experience that you had today for those few minutes of doing Rup Dhyan? They'll bring a mic over to you so that everyone can hear your question. Beam uh, here in the middle. Raise your hand again. So I think my question is Guru and Krishna is one, but when you're doing a Rup Dhyan, like which one should you pick? I think that's either Guru or Krishna. Either or both. So it's definitely good to always remember Guru that with Guru's grace we're able to do this Rup Dhyan. So you never want to exclude Guru from it. But as far as, okay, I'm going to form this image. You could either form the image of Radha, Krishna or Kripaluji Maharaj. You'll get the same benefit. So you have said that bhakti is the only means to uh, unite yourself with the divine soul. But for me, I have read somewhere that there are other forms of, uh, you know, like uh, jnana yoga or what karma, say, karma yoga. Yog. Yeah. So the other forms of uh, ways to unite yourself with the divine soul. Those so, are also infused with bhakti. So, see, there's karm and there's karma yoga. There's gyan and gyan yoga. So, karm on its own means doing good actions, following the dharm, uh, doing one's duty. That on its own is rewarded with a good destiny in your next life. It doesn't result in God realization. But if the person doing all that good karm offers all their actions to God, then they've infused it with bhakti. So, see, if you offer your action to God, you're remembering God. You're keeping God in your mind. So, it's really karm plus bhakti equals karma yoga. The yoga part means joining your mind with God. 
So just karma is not enough. But karma yoga means you're doing bhakti with the karma. That results in God realization. Same thing with jnana. Just the intellectual pursuit of understanding the, the theory of the scriptures and uh, trying to understand our oneness with God. That isn't enough. We actually have to surrender our mind to God to receive His grace. So on one hand, you have a jnani who is just practicing this uh, non-dualistic meditation. That's not enough for God realization. If the jnani does that and surrenders to God, then he becomes a jnan yogi. That results in God realization. So jnan plus bhakti equals jnan yoga. So again, the bhakti is the prime ingredient. The others are secondary. Thank you. Any other questions? And my question is, uh, along with the meditation, I mean, meditation is good for your mind. What role does uh, like being physically fit and doing meditation play a role in that one? It definitely helps. Physical fitness and health help keep our mind more healthy and focused, which helps with our meditation and our devotion. So uh, there is a very close relationship between the body and the mind. If we don't care for our body properly, if we don't eat sattvic food and exercise to keep our body healthy, the mind is going to be affected by that and it will be dragged down. <laughs> okay. One more question if anyone has anything to ask. Okay, good. We have enough time left to practice Rup Dhyan one more time. So, oh, one, one last question. So, uh, the question I have is, um, other than the meditation technique that you just explained, and, you know, we've been um, learning it from, since several years, we can spend like an hour in the day doing that, but then what, what should be our focus for the rest of the uh, time that we have available that will also speed up the process of purification um, of heart and mind? Another simple thing is just try to remember Krishna's with you. That Rup Dhyan we do where we're specifically focusing on his form. You can't do that when you're engaged in worldly activities, but you can sense his presence. So just feel he's with you and try to practice that throughout the day. Like Kripaluji Maharaj says, when you're going somewhere, you, then you say to yourself, okay, Krishna, let's go. I'm not going alone, he's coming with me. So he's sitting in the car with me, or we're walking together, going over here. Or you can say, come, sit in here. And we're going. And when you get to where you're going, take him out. And okay, now you're... So you keep that connection with Krishna throughout the day. It means you're thinking of him. So you're still getting more of that grace and experience. Okay, let's spend a few minutes doing Rup Dhyan. We're going to do Kirtan along with it, but I want to settle you into the practice of the Rup Dhyan first. So let's all close our eyes. Close your eyes, get comfortable. <coughs> Take a couple nice relaxing breaths, deep breaths. And just start thinking of Krishna or Radha or Kripaluji Maharaj. Start doing your Rup Dhyan the way you want to. Visualize their form. And infuse that visualization with the faith that this is real Krishna in front of you. He's looking at you. He sees you. You can talk to him, you can touch him. So keeping this feeling of liveliness in the Rup Dhyan, we're going to start doing some Kirtan. While we're doing the Kirtan, always keep the image of Krishna in your mind. If your mind wanders, just notice that it's gone somewhere and bring it back. You can even think of a Leela that you can join in 
and take part in that Leela with Krishna. Or just imagine any scenario or situation, even in your own world, in your own life, where Krishna is with you and you're with him. You're talking to him or you're doing some seva to him. In this way, we'll keep our mind engrossed and in union with Shri Krishna. Oh, 
silence to just breathe naturally be relaxed and just notice what do you feel do you feel any effect of the meditation you were just doing pay attention to how does your heart feel how does your body feel we'll just spend a minute sitting in silence
Now you can all open your eyes. We'll have a few announcements before the Aarti. Radhe Radhe everyone, welcome to Sri Raseshwari Radharani Temple. We are so fortunate to have Swami Nikhilanand Bhaiya and all of you here with us over the Memorial Day weekend. Bhaiya will be here up till June 3rd. Thank you Bhaiya for the special pravachan today. So for those of you 